If you've been following the tech news, you know exactly what's going on. Right now, every single technological device you can think of is facing the same fate, the RAM crisis. Take a look at these two builds. They are the exact same. The one on the left was built exactly three months ago, and the one on the right is from today. The only difference between them is the RAM. For the last month and a half, the world has been experiencing a serious RAM crisis. And trust me, we are facing a situation far scarier than just rising RAM prices. DRAM and NAND manufacturers are suffering from supply shortages, AI investments are continuing at full speed, geopolitical tensions are rising, and amidst all this, we, the end users, are the ones suffering the most. For the first time in 30 years, all four major memory categories are facing a shortage simultaneously. That quote belongs to ADATA CEO Simon Chen. So, why has this crisis emerged in the last month, and what awaits us in the future? Stick with me because we need to have a serious talk about this. For you to be able to fully grasp the issue, I need to start from the very basics. In summary, two types of memory called DRAM and NAND are found in almost every device you can imagine. We usually see NAND in storage units like flash drives and SSDs. DRAM, on the other hand, is used in RAM modules, some SSD models, graphics cards, and even inside processors. The shortage and price hikes we are experiencing are directly about these two chips. And the reason for a shortage regarding chips that have been so common and widely used for years is simple. Artificial intelligence. AIs like ChatGPT and Gemini are built on technologies called LLMs, or large language models. And these technologies require a vast amount of data to be processed. Since interest in these technologies is incredibly high, massive data centers are being constructed all around the world just to meet this demand and rapidly develop the technology. To process this data, the devices in these data centers need specific components. As you might guess, the most critical of these parts are DRAM memory and NAND storage chips. Imagine you're an investor. The AI craze sounds like a fantastic investment opportunity. After all, artificial intelligence is developing rapidly. It seems like it's where the future is headed, and it doesn't seem like it's going to vanish anytime soon, like NFTs did. I'm not even mentioning the money that can be made here. So seeing this huge development as an opportunity, you jump into the field and establish your own AI company. You set up your own data center with a $100 million investment and start training your own AI model. That is exactly where the problem stems from. Just like you, hundreds of other investors are doing the exact same thing. The source of the problem lies in the special type of memory used in the data centers established by these investors. This type of memory is called HBM, or high bandwidth memory. These memories are completely different from the DDR or LPDDR modules we use in our PCs. HBMs are much faster and in turn, also more expensive. As hundreds of investors like you have entered this field, the demand for data centers is increasing every day. This translates to an incredible demand for HBM memory and NAND chips. For memory manufacturers, this demand means fast and guaranteed money. That's why giant manufacturers like SK Hynix, Samsung, and Micron have started to focus heavily on HBM production. It's simply more profitable. If you're looking for proof, just take a look at the six-month stock charts of these companies. And then came that massive project, Stargate. Several major investment in tech companies like OpenAI and Oracle made a colossal agreement totaling $500 billion at the beginning of 2025. The goal of this project is to develop models of OpenAI, like ChatGPT and Sora, as quickly as possible to prevent aggressive competitors like Google and DeepSeek from overtaking them in this highly competitive AI space. As you can imagine, this requires a massive amount of data processing power, and that means plenty of HBM memory, piles of NVIDIA GPUs, and huge amounts of NAND storage. Orders for HBM memory and NAND started pouring in months ago for this project. This means the manufacturer's main focus has shifted entirely to HBM. At this point, you might be asking, cool story, but what does this have to do with us? The type of RAM we use is DDR, while data centers use HBM. So, during a demand explosion, what is the most logical thing memory manufacturers can do to maximize profit, regardless of the consequences? Of course, it's heading where the money is at. And that is exactly what these companies did. To produce more HBM chips, they either drastically reduced or completely stopped DDR chip production for consumers. Consequently, an unmet demand emerged in the RAM market. Few producers, low stock, high demand. This creates the perfect ground for prices to rise. I'm not joking. We're talking about buying 32 gigabytes of RAM for the price of a GPU. Now, let's talk about the consequences that have already happened and what awaits us in the future. 1. The price of RAM and devices with RAMs will increase. RAM prices are already out of control. 
Aside from that, it is certain that the prices of all devices containing DRAM will rise. For example, according to industry sources, Dell and Lenovo are planning to hike PC and server prices by up to 15% this month. Additionally, there are rumors that the GPU boards NVIDIA sends to manufacturers will no longer include VRAM, meaning that an RTX 5070 without VRAM will be sent to Asus, and Asus will have to find and install these memories themselves. This inevitably means higher prices. Prices of SSDs with DRAMs have also been affected much more than DRAMless models. If this crisis lasts longer than expected, even the most unrelated products containing DRAM could see price hikes. 2. End users will be overlooked. It was actually clear all the way back in 2020 and 2023 that this would eventually happen. Many NAND manufacturers almost completely abandoned the consumer side because they didn't think the end user was profitable enough. No major innovations or serious investments were made. When AI burst onto the scene, everyone pivoted to that side. Just like during the crypto mining crisis earlier in 2021, no product is being left for the end user. The best example of this trend is Micron. Micron recently pulled the plug on their consumer brand, Crucial, which produced RAM and SSDs for end users. They announced that they would now only produce for AI centers under the Micron name and completely withdrew from the consumer market. 3. Geopolitical issues will arise. You don't need to be an expert to guess that artificial intelligence will be one of the most critical factors in the competition between countries in the future. Therefore, many of the largest nations have started to increase their investments in this area. Since the path to AI investments goes directly through these chips, many bans and obstacles regarding chip production have started to arise directly between the US and China. While China uses rare earth elements as a trump card, the US has taken steps to prevent the supply of chip production equipment to China. This is a very deep subject regarding international politics, going far beyond just chips. That's why I can't talk much more about it. The only thing you need to know is that this shortage could shift certain balances in international politics in both directions. If you're asking what awaits us in the future, I will answer that immediately. But first, I have something to tell you. These videos take a long time to make, but a large majority of viewers are not subscribed and don't like the videos. This negatively affects the views. If you want to support me, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment. That way I can make more videos for you. Now let's continue where we left off. Everyone says something different about how long this shortage will last, so it's impossible for us to make a clear prediction. According to many estimates, this crisis will continue until at least six months from now, or in the worst case scenario, until 2027. There are also those who say it could last even longer. Faizen CEO Pua Kane Seng says, AI will generate 1,000 times more data than humans and will strain storage space, suggesting that this shortage could be a process spanning 10 years. However, the clearest thing we know is this. The longer this crisis drags on, the worse the consequences will be. These memories are used in GPUs, they are used in SSDs, they are even used inside processors. If this crisis lasts longer than a year, it means the price of all these products will increase. This will directly affect every smart device, from phones to televisions. We know that Samsung, which produces its own memory, resisted selling memory to its own phone division for a long time just to make more profit by selling chips to these AI companies. So here is my advice to you. If you are thinking of building a PC, upgrading your current PC, or buying another smart device in the near future, hurry up. If possible, prioritize hardware that contains DRAM. And be aware that if you find a reasonably priced product, you won't have much luxury of choice. If you are thinking of turning to the secondhand market to get it cheaper, listen to what I'm about to say very carefully. Never buy secondhand SSDs and storage products. The SSD you buy might have a virus loaded onto it, they could steal your data, or they might dump a product on you that has reached the end of its lifespan. However, if the part you are considering buying secondhand is RAM, you can go for second hands with peace of mind, since RAMs are one of the hardest parts to break and don't have the groundwork for serious problems like SSDs do. But whatever you buy, make sure you know what the product really is. Stay away from no-name brands and be on alert for counterfeit products. It is very likely that there will be an increase in fake products during these periods, so keep your eyes peeled. Otherwise, while trying to save money, you might end up losing more. If you don't want to deal with these types of problems and are thinking of buying a console instead, you can find out if a console is the right choice for you by watching this video. And with that, we are wrapping up our video. So how long do you think this shortage will continue? Have you been directly affected? Don't forget to share your experiences in the comments. I read all of them. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If not, feel free to dislike it. Stay mysterious until the next video. Take care and bye.